Oh, it's on. Fancy. Okay. Are you the scribe? Are you the scribe? That's the person that writes stuff down. Okay. All right. So who is your leader? I do. I'm inspired by the fact that it says inspired on it. Things? Cool. All right. All right. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much that we can be here tonight, Lord. Thank you that you gave us your word. Thank you that we can open it together. And I just pray right now, Jesus, that you would just uh, quiet our hearts, help us to shut out the noise and distractions uh, that can crawl in between our ears, uh, and that we can be dialed in with you for a little bit here, Lord. Just ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. We're starting a series on light. Well, it's more than that, but it's kind of the beginning of it. Okay. I'll start with a story. This morning, I got up well before daylight. There was no moon. There's lots of stars. And the world was like almost black in front of your face. Okay. Anybody kind of freaked out by that kind of stuff to go outside without a flashlight or without any kind of light and think you can wander around and like, I got this. I'm not going to bump into anything scary like the skunk that's in my front yard digging for grubs, you know, or anything extra creepy. Okay. Sometimes it's scary in the dark and we don't know what's there. Okay. How many of you have been in a power outage? Or you're minding your own business. There's just a little thunderstorm and poof. The world is black and quiet except for your screaming. Okay. But what's it do? What does it do? It does. And it's surprising that in a dark room, one tiny little flame. That's even better. But by the time you have lit the first candle, does the anxiety start to go down? Like, oh. Okay, I got this. It's all right. I'm going to light 15 more in the next 47 seconds, but we got one lit. We're good. We have light. Okay. This morning, I had a friend who uh, I'll call him my hurricane refugee friend uh, because he flew up with his wife from Florida uh, to avoid the hurricane. Uh, that, and he asked me if I could take him out this morning in the dark. Uh, to kind of get his mind off everything going on back where he lives. And I don't blame him for that, because there's a lot going on where he lives, and there's a realistic chance with the hurricane that's coming that they may go home to their house no longer standing where it was before. Uh, and it's pretty scary stuff. Uh, and it's going to become, tonight's going to be a rough night in Florida, so if you think of it, pray for the people that are there. And then pray for ways, and we talk about the light and shining God's light into the world that even up here in Michigan, that how can we uh, be light for those people? Okay. Anyway, he wanted to see a Michigan elk, which he didn't think actually existed other than the elk that are out west in the Rocky Mountains. So he got in my truck, and I ruined the darkness by starting the truck and turning the lights on, because kind of need him to drive in the dark. And we went out this morning, and it was barely starting to get light out but you could start to see shapes where you could actually, you know, walk down the trail through the woods without lights on. And we could hear the elk bugle in the dark. And it's the sound the boys make when they're saying to other boy elk, uh, these girls that are here, they're mine. You can't have them. And if you think you can, well, try me and I'll stab you with my giant antlers. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of what he's saying, if I'm going to speak elk for a second. Okay. Uh, Long story short, as, we wa as we're walking, it's becoming more and more light, and you can see more and more of what's in front of you, and you become safer and more confident in where you're stepping. And eventually, by the time it was mostly daylight, and you could still hear the bull bugling, you start to hear brush breaking, and then we could actually see the elk, and it was really cool to get to watch the elk for a while this morning. No, we weren't hunting. 
because elk season is over and we weren't part of the chosen few that get an elk tag in Michigan. He can never get an elk tag in Michigan because he doesn't live here. So, and most of us that live here won't either. So, I'm gonna circle back to him in a minute in terms of the light, but once the sun started to come up and it wasn't even over the horizon, that light permeated where we were at. Everything changed. You could see, you could sneak along quietly, but before that, if we were to walk through the woods, what would happen? trip over a log, you know, smoke, yeah, face plant. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good time. Uh, then we'd have been really loud and we scared the elk away. Uh, the light, like that came up with the sun, keep that in mind. Light's one of the characteristics uh, of our Lord. Uh, it says that God is light and in him there isn't any darkness. And John 8, 12 says, And spoke Jesus again unto them, saying, I'm the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. If you have Jesus in your heart, if you're a believer, okay, you know what, um, we know that we're supposed to act like him. Okay, and in doing that, we're to represent him to a world and show his light to that world. Okay. Open your Bibles to Matthew, chapter 5. Anybody ever heard of the Sermon on the Mount? A couple of you. It's actually the longest recorded sermon that, uh, that Jesus preached that's in print. And we're going to start closer to, the, you know, to the, the end of it, and then we'll go back to the beginning here in a little bit. Matthew 5, and we're going to be looking at verses 14, not 14, sorry. Yes, 14 through 16. Do I have a reader? Connor, go ahead. That'd be awesome. Thanks. Yes, please. Yes, please. You're up. So we're not doing good things for us to get the recognition. What are we doing them for? What did Connor just read? What do we do those good things for? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And not just God, but so that other people will see what? See him. See, see point that what we are doing and saying and how we interact as his light in the world, it points people where? To Jesus, yep. Okay, because we live in a dark world that needs a savior pretty badly. Okay. Uh, Jesus doesn't say in that that there's potential for us to have His light, but when we have Him in His our in our in when He lives in us, okay, He's declaring that we are what. We are the light of the world at that point. Okay. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6 says, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts and gives the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Another verse that follows along with that is Philippians 2.15. She may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world. You look around you, you see a crooked and, and kind of dark and evil world. We don't have to look very far to see that. It might be people that you see that you go to school with. It might be if you uh, are, are brave enough to watch the news at night and see what's going on and hear what's going on. Uh, it's a tough place that we live in right now. Okay. I'm going to circle back to my buddy and from my, my hurricane refugee friend. Okay. This morning, when we were done with the elk, and we were riding around out in the Pigeon River area for a little while, he's on the phone. 
And I was kind of blown away because I have no reception in the pigeon, which is the way I want it. I prefer to have no bars out there. Well, for some reason, Florida boy has bars on his phone in the pigeon. And what he was doing the whole time, as I'm listening to half of the conversation, blew me away. His friends in Tampa, that they know what's coming and that their house is going to be ruined and they didn't have a place to go. So he is giving them the keys to their house, you know, telling them where they were at, where to park that your car will be the safest, what you should bring with you, where you should store things that they'll be the safest. And then he's on the phone with this guy that, who's like a, like a, drives like a box truck, like a delivery truck. And he knew of other people that had things that were certainly going to be ruined in the storm surge when the 15 feet of water comes on shore in Tampa tonight. And he paid this guy over the phone a lot more money than I was, I was shocked at what it was going to cost just to get these people's things out. And I look at him like, I know you well enough to know why, but just, just say the quiet part out loud for me, will you? He goes, because that guy's lost and he needs to know Jesus. What was my friend doing? He was being the light this morning. Up here, stressing about his own stuff, even though we were riding around where it's pretty, which just is amazing to me to think that we are in this beautiful, sunshiny, leaves-turning, amazing part of the world, and he came from a part that's about to get ripped to shreds. Uh, and he wasn't, he was still concerned about the people that he knew he needed to be the light for this morning. So I was really moved by that. It was really cool. Okay, a lot of times we live in a world where the church sometimes doesn't, and we don't, as, peop, as, as believers, we aren't always very bold when it comes to shining our light. Okay, sometimes it's easier to hide it. They talk about hiding it under a basket or... Um, under or putting it in a vessel, which was looking at the the Old Test or the New Testament, the, the translation for it meant like hiding it under your bed. Um, I kind of had to chuckle because if you think about it, if you were to hide a candle under your bed, what's going to happen? You're probably going to have a house fire. Okay, your parents are going to be mad when they find out that you, you know, hid a candle under the bed. Sorry, dumb rabbit trail. I don't know that they would be crispy so much as uh, liquefied at that point, and it would still be very sad. And liquid Legos would be pretty useless, too. Okay. So I want you guys in your groups, and we're going to read some verses here a little farther back in the sermon. Think about how you can shed light in a world and what Jesus talks about in here in terms of how you can, in different ways that you can be the light. And then I'm going to have you brainstorm with your leaders for a couple minutes. I'm not going to give you a lot of time, but I want you to write out just practical everyday ways that you can be uh, that light to people in, in a dark and scary world. Okay, Jump back to verse 3 in chapter 5 in Matthew. Anybody heard of the Beatitudes? Anybody been told they have an attitude? Okay, this is a little different. <laughs> All right. I'll read them. You just listen, and I want you to think about uh, I want you to think about some of the, the main terms in here when they come up. Okay. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they'll be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they'll be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Some of the things that jumped out at me when you read that is that people who are meek are blessed. Okay, that one might be a little tricky. What's it mean to be meek? Go ahead. To a point, yeah, humble. I mean, humility's part of it. Yeah, you're not wrong. Okay, I like it. It's a, it's a synonym. I don't know if it's like 
right there with it, but I get it. Think of meekness like this. You have a Dodge Charger. If you don't know what it is, think really fast, angry American muscle car. Okay. Does it mean that you have to drive that car as hard as you can and redline it and, you know, go 135 on the expressway? No, it does not. Just because you have the muscle doesn't mean you have to use the muscle. Okay. Meekness is power or strength under control and reined in and used appropriately. Okay. But look at some of those other words in there with your group, okay? Uh, and ask yourselves, you know, who's going to inherit the earth? Uh, who, will be shown, who will be shown mercy? Okay, who's going to see God? Who will be called the sons of God? And then I want you to kind of put skin on this, so to speak, for a couple minutes. I want you to talk about some practical ways, and your leader's going to write them down as fast as they can, that you as a believer can show light in the world by doing those things. You have three minutes. Go. Helping. Ten seconds. All right, close enough. Leaders, you're the ones I want to hear from. I want you to take a look at your, uh, your list, no matter how disheveled, and I want you to pick out the one that jumped out at you like, yeah, that is someone, one of these, one of these young ladies or intrepid young scholars over here had a great idea, and that is a cool way that we could show and be the light of Jesus to a dark world. And I don't care which leader goes first. Yes, I do. Why it would all? Hold the door. Yeah, it's simple, and a lot of people don't even think to do it anymore. Cool. Bert Townsend. Yeah, when people need stuff and they can't supply it for themselves, being able to help them out, cool thing. Go ahead. Pay for their McDonald's. Woo. Naomi. Yeah, okay. Shh. 
shine it in here. Uh, thanks, guys. Go ahead. Ooh. Don't be the cause of conflict. In fact, you know, there's probably, you could go a little farther than that, is like you said, the being the peacemaker. Being the one that says, hey, let's take a breath and step back and, uh, and look at this and help people find middle ground on that. It's huge. Go ahead. Bro, really? The candy? All right, we got to wrap this up because you have, you have a little time in your small group, so I'm going to end it with uh, one more really quick, really quick thing I want to read to you, which I thought was a really cool example of Jesus' light shining through believers. There was a Hindu trader that once asked a missionary, what do you put on your face to make it shine? And the surprise, the man of God answered, I don't put anything on it. His questioner began to lose patience and said emphatically, yes, you do. All of you who believe in Jesus seem to have it. I've seen it in towns from Agra, Ar, yeah, Agra to Swart, and even in the city of Bombay. Suddenly the Christian understood, and his face glowed even more when he said, How I know what you mean. I'll tell you the secret. It is not something we put on our face on the outside, but something that comes from within. It is the reflection of light of God in our hearts. We need to think about how we, not just how we appear in our countenance. As believers, to wander around and have a sour face and scowl and look disinterested and bored and cranky, okay? We're doing it wrong at that point, guys. Okay. And some of those beatitudes, the, the kindness and the gentleness and the meekness and the humility and the making of peace that was talked about, those things really do matter. Okay. They speak volumes, and they are like the sun coming up in the woods this morning. You cannot get away from it. Once the light is there, unless you throw something over top of it, okay, once that source is turned on, we're kind of like the light bulb. Okay. We don't power ourselves, but as long as that light bulb is on, Jesus in us, okay, we're going to light up the room. That's what he wants us to do. So, time to go to your small groups and continue. <laughs>